Can we stand together and give that hand clap of praise to the Lord one more time? Lord, we love you. We thank you, Jesus, for the presence that we feel in this place today. Amen. 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 Everybody good? Amen. Amen. It's such an honor to, to be here this weekend. We give honor to brother and sister Darnell Bishop Kenny and his wife. They've been so kind to us this weekend, hosting us. been uh, a great time, which you'll get to hear him tonight, so make sure you come back at 4 o'clock to partner with Brother Randall Lee and his wife, Sister Danielle, uh, Brother Corey. It's been a great weekend. Just want to give honor to all of you. This has been a great uh, service Friday night in Cahoka, a good time. I'm, you know, I've got the boot on my leg, so I wasn't very useful yesterday for the bat spinning and running relay race, but it sure was fun to watch people kind of fall all over the place. Uh, but that was a, a good time yesterday, and I'm still full from the first meal we ate on uh, Friday night, and then I ate about three more yesterday, so I'm full from that, and I know that there's probably more coming down the pike later on, and so when I get home this week, I'm just going to need to lay down for a few days, I think, and just, uh, it's been amazing, amazing hospitality. Uh, and also to be here with my wife, Olivia. I love her so much. And our baby boy, Memphis, who will be here in January, our first. Uh, we're excited about that. We're excited about that. But more importantly, I'm thankful for the presence of the Lord that we felt in these services Friday night and that we feel already uh, here today. And I know that we will again at 4 o'clock. Hasn't this youth worship team and this team just done an excellent job today? Can we give them honor today? Amen. Amen. That's in order. Amen. Brother Darnell, I'm going to have to use that live stream spying trick if that uh, ever comes. I'm going to put that in my back pocket and remember that for, for future use. If you have your Bibles, Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 through 12, and then I promise we'll pray and I'll let you sit down, even though I'm the guy that's going to stand up here all the time. Back home, I'd, after I'm done reading and praying, I kind of just stare at them for a little bit and see how long they'll stand up with me. And then they typically sit down on me, so I go ahead and let them sit. Exodus chapter 3. How many of you know God wants to use you? God's got a plan for you. Not just me or Pastor Darnell or Bishop Kenny for you. He's a personal God, and He's in this place today, and He's got a purpose for you. Amen. Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert, came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw not... Nigh hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows." And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey unto the place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Now therefore, behold the cry of the Lord, uh, the, behold the cry of the children of Israel is coming to me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppress them. Come therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, Certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, ye shall serve God upon this mountain. I say again, one time before we pray, God has a plan for you in this building today. I don't know where you've been. I don't know what you've dealt with. I don't know what you've come through. I don't know what you've went, gone through this week to just get you to this place. We say it all the time back home. We don't care what brought you here. We're just glad that you're here. But that now that you're here, God, the God that we serve has a plan and a purpose that is specific to you and you alone. One more time before you're seated, could we just lift our hands in unity and, and welcome the presence of the Lord and just let him do whatever he wants to do in this place today. Lord, we love you. 
We thank you for this opportunity to worship together in one mind and one accord. We thank you for your promise that you are calling us, that you are choosing us, that you are sending us, and you will equip us. Lord, we love you. We thank you. We praise you. We magnify your name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. I won't do the stare down with you all because I want you to like me. And <laughs> How many of you ever heard the term fear of missing out? FOMO, right? Yeah, it's, it's known as the, the fear of missing out. And I'm always fascinated by these terms that get put in the dictionary after they just become so mainstream and cultural. And so this term became, uh, was added to the Oxford English Dictionary in 2013. And so it speaks to people who uh, overcommit because they just want to be involved in every single thing. And so if, if someone has a, an invite here, they're saying yes. And if someone comes from this side of the room with an invite there, they go, yep, I'll be there. But in the process, because they're so scared of missing out on some great opportunity, they say yes to everything out of this fear of missing out. But oftentimes, as a result of this, they fail to fulfill all of the promises that they are making. And so uh, years ago in, a, in a, a magazine, Psychology Today, it referenced a new way of looking at this term where people oftentimes are so worried about missing out that they say yes to everything. They came at it from the other side uh, of the spectrum and instead of over committing with this same fear of missing out, people begin to avoid agreements and avoid commitments because they think if I make a commitment to this, well, someone from over here is going to walk in and invite me to do that, and since I've committed here, then I can't go there. And so, by default, instead of over-committing, they become paralyzed almost by inaction. They're so scared of missing out that they would rather just sit in silence or sit by themselves and not take part in anything because there may be a better option coming down the road. Other experiences that could maybe result in greater satisfaction or greater gratification or maybe this plan down the road will be just a little bit better than the, the, what I have right here in front of me right now. In other words, they're just saying, I don't want to do anything because I want to keep my options open. It's a fear and it's, it, it, it's motivated by not what you could potentially gain from saying yes and taking part in whatever uh, invite or whatever scenario is in front of you, but it, it is something that, would, uh, that is motivated by what you could potentially lose. Fear of missing out. And so in our text, we find Moses in a situation sort of like this. God chose Moses. God had a grand plan for Moses based on God's expectation for Moses' future. We read this in the text right here. God is calling and God is choosing and God has plans for Moses, a, a purpose for him to accomplish. And we see Moses battling with this fear. And so it stands to reason if God back then was dealing with Moses with, with purpose and future and anointing and destiny and all of these things, it stands to reason that that same God that we serve is here today choosing you wanting to send you with a plan for you and me, thank the Lord, based on God's expectations for our future. Amen? And so if that's true, and I believe that it is, the question then becomes, at least in my mind, as I read through this text and as I studied uh, and the Lord dealt with me about this, uh, how do we respond to God's expectations? Because the truth is, no matter where you're from, or, or, or where, where you've been, or what you've done, or what got you here, as we talked about just a second ago. One, God is here. Two, God loves you and has chosen you and wants to use you and has a purpose and a future for you. Based on not what you think you deserve or, or what you are in your own mind, but what God has for your future. God chose Moses right there at that burning bush, not because of what Moses was or where he was at or what Moses could do on his own, but because of the future that God had for Moses. So God has chosen you based on the future that God has for you. So how do we respond to that? It's a lot of res responsibility. It's a lot of opportunity. But if we're, caref if we're not careful, we can get into that that moment where Moses is right here in our text, 
or in the more you know modern terms as we're talking about today that fear of missing out or that fear of maybe you know just the fear that'll paralyze us into inactivity and so as I began to look at how Moses responded I began to see kind of how we could or how I can respond to this expectation that God has for us and the first thing we have to do and I think we, if I asked everyone around this room, do you believe that God has a plan for you based on God's expectations for you, for your future, every hand would go up and we would say yes. And so if that's the case, how do we get there? How do we get from that moment, Moses, at the burning bush to leading the children of Israel out of Egypt and into your perfect uh, will of God for your life? How do we get there? Well, the first thing Moses had to do was choose to move beyond his past. Moses had every single reason in the world to feel disqualified. The beginning of our text, we find where Moses is. He's not there in Egypt still. He's not just living the greatest life. He is on the backside of the wilderness in hiding as a fugitive. He, has, he saw the Egyptian beating the Israelite, and he took care of that situation, hoping that they would see that he was one of them. And instead, they were like, "Who? what are you going to... You going to kill me like you killed that, our brother yesterday, that brother yesterday? And he is on the run, and he is on the backside of the wilderness for years and years and years, and he hid the body, you know, and the word spread, and you can feel the, 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 the pain and the sweat and the tension maybe in Moses' life as he figures out, what am I going to do next? I can't stay here in Egypt, and so I'm just going to do the thing that I know to do and run as far away from where I'm supposed to be as I can possibly get. And so that's where we find Moses, on the backside of a desert on the backside of a wilderness, dealing with a past that he cannot quite reconcile for 40 years, living life as a fugitive. He's 80 years old when he has this encounter with God. And so he's dealt with that what if maybe scenario, or maybe I responded this way and didn't do that, or maybe, maybe, they don't, maybe enough time has passed, but, but God still finds him regardless of his past. And he says to him in verse 10, I am sending you. I am sending you. You, Moses, you're chosen regardless of where you came from. Moses, you're chosen regardless of what you've been into. Moses, you are chosen regardless of your past decision. Moses, you're chosen regardless of what you think about yourself and the, the things in you that you don't like or the character flaws that you think you have or the responsibility that you can't undertake because you just don't have the skill set to do it. No, Moses, I know you've been on the backside of this desert for 40 years, but I am calling you right now and choosing you right now so I can send you right now because I have a plan for your future that is bigger than yourself and it is bigger than your past mistakes and so Moses us today as we sit here in this room people of God who have purpose and plans and anointings to fulfill in Jesus name we have to first things first choose to move beyond our past you got to move past the things. I have to move on a daily basis past the things that we feel disqualify us. We have to choose. Instead of being paralyzed by fear of inaction or inactivity or what may come down the road or, well, there's somebody over here who's way more qualified or I'm over here on the backside of the desert because of choices I've made and self-inflicted wounds along the way. No, 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 no. God is in this place because He has purpose for you and He is choosing you regardless of what happened yesterday. Regardless, maybe it's been 40 years down the road. Maybe it was last night. God is here calling and reaching and pursuing because He has purpose and He has promise for you. We say, you know, I've done too much and I don't have the pedigree, I don't have the heritage, I don't, you don't know the, we have a tendency in life, I do, I know I struggle and I tell myself to stop quite a bit. We have a tendency to life to look on social media or look uh, when we go to big camp meetings and different things like that and we see people being used or the people that we think are, uh, you know, the, the greatest used in the kingdom and we look at their highlight reels and we compare them to our blooper reels because I know what I've done. I know the things that I've done along the, the course of this 34 years that I've been on this globe and, and I, I look at what I've done time and time again and thank God for His mercy and grace and forgiveness and salvation and baptism and all of these things but we can tend to get in a position where we look at other people being used and we say you know what I can't do that because I know who I really am but God is in this place today saying no 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 I know who you really are and I have purpose and I have promise and you have use for my kingdom but to get there we got to choose to move beyond our past because thank God, God forgives, and we, like Moses, have to make that choice. Romans 6.11 says, Likewise, reckon ye yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Reckon. That word reckon means to conclude after calculation. We have to reckon. We have to come to the conclusion after thinking about things. After thinking about, yes, God has a, pl- a promise for me. God has a plan for me. I've done these things, but I, I, I know that God still has use for me. We have got to come to the conclusion after much calculation that no matter what we've gone through to get us to this point, there is still promise and future and purpose in our lives. We have to reckon that God has a plan for us. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, old things are passed away when you have an encounter with a God who loves you and can offer you salvation when you have a counter in Jesus name buried in baptism in the water you come up a new creature and who you were yesterday though you may be right now on the backside of the wilderness who you were yesterday is no longer you are brand new in Christ you have new purpose and calling and destiny but we got to choose we got to choose to move beyond that yesterday I study history. I live in yesterday. It's a battle I fight with all the time. I study history in school and I teach some history along, I've taught some history along the way, and and I am constantly living in yesterday, talking about the principles of yesterday and how they can relate to our right now. But if I'm not careful, I can sit in, say, 2015 when I made a decision I I shouldn't have made, or or 2012 when some tragedy struck in my life, or or something along the way, and I say, you know what, I'm going to be paralyzed by fear of missing out to the point of inaction because there are some things in my past, and God's saying, no, 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 I'm right here in 2021 with you on my mind and your future in my vision, and it is based on not who you say you are, but who I say you are. So we got to choose to move beyond our past. And not only do we have to choose to move beyond our past, we have to choose. It is a choice. We have to reckon after much calculation. We have to conclude that we are going to let God have the final say over your current excuses. If God can handle our past and we can move beyond it, we surely know that he can handle our right now and what we bring to the table. I love this story so much because I just see just how human Moses really is. You know, Moses is a great intercessor, and Moses leads the children of Israel through the Red Sea, and he leads them to the edge of the Promised Land, and he's done all of these great things. He's a biblical hero. He's in the Hall of Faith in Hebrews. And, uh, but right here, Moses looks a little bit more like me on a daily basis when I try to reckon that God is, is working with me. Moses had a lot of reasons why this wasn't going to work. First thing he says is, I'm not good enough. Verse 11, Moses says unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? I, who am I? You sure you got the right guy? I just turned over here because I saw this, you know, this burning bush and I just wanted to you know, check it out, as most probably would. And now you say you're calling, do you know who I am? Moses sounds a lot like me in that moment. Ah, you sure? And then... It, 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 it's interesting to me because he hears the calling Moses, Moses and he says here am I and God does the calling and telling him his plan and immediately his here am I goes to who am I here am I God Moses I got something for you to do who am I? you sure? and then not only does he go to I not good enough he moves in verse 13 to I don't have the answers He says, Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers has sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What's what's his name? What what shall I say to them? You sure you got the right guy? And if you have the right guy, what am I supposed to say to them if I go? Moses, fear of missing out. Fear paralyzing to inactivity. And not only that, he's not done there. As you're reading this, if you're anything like me, you're like, come on, Moses, you know who's calling you. Just do what you're supposed to do. And then the Lord holds up the mirror kind of in the spirit, and I look at how many times I've done these same things, and I'm like, okay, point proven. And so he moves from who am I to what am I supposed to say to, okay, if I do all of that, well, they're not going to believe me anyway. In the next chapter, which I didn't read in my text, but verse 1 of chapter 4, Moses answers and says, Behold, they're not going to believe me, nor hearken unto my voice, for they'll say, The Lord hath hath not appeared unto thee. Who am I? What am I going to say? 
If I say something, they're not going to believe me. And he's not done there. Old human Moses just trying to reconcile the fact that God could, after 40 years of living life as a fugitive on the backside of a wilderness, still have purpose and plan for him. And then he goes, well, you know, I'm not even, even if I do that, I can't speak. Verse 10 of chapter 4 says, Moses said unto the Lord, Oh my Lord, I'm not eloquent, neither heretofore, nor since thou hast spoken unto me unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. I have an impediment. I have a problem that is going to disqualify me from actually accomplishing your purpose and your plan for me. So even if all the other things that you said to me just now were true, I have list after list after list for you, God, to tell you why I'm not the guy for the job. I'm just going to sit right here in the... I'm a fugitive, probably living life of disappointment, you know where you came from, you know what you've done, and he's, he's got to know that there's more out there for him, but he has allowed his f fear to paralyze him to the point of saying, I'm not the guy for the job, I don't know what to say, they're not going to believe me even if I did, and even if I did say something to them, I can't speak. And then he finally just comes out and says it in verse 13, and he said, Oh my Lord, send I pray thee by the hand of him who thou wilt send. Send someone else. I'm not the right man for the job. And so if we get stuck right there in that moment of hesitancy, if we get right there in that moment of humanity and that fleshly disqualification and we're just saying, no, I know I can't do it, I'm not the one. Here's the, here's the point. Here's where everything begins to change and where we should allow things to change for us in our lives when these types of questions pop up in our brains when God's saying, I have a purpose for you. You've got a school to reach. You've got people at your workplace that, you have that, that need this gospel message. You have family members who need what you have and you're sitting there saying, well, I'm trying to reconcile the things that I've done and the things that, I've, uh, that have happened along the way and, and they're not going to believe me if I offer it to them and they don't want to hear what I have to say and then you maybe get to the point, God, just send someone else, please. Just send someone else. Well, well, God has an answer for that to every single thing Moses through God's direction God had an answer back Exodus 4 2 through 4 the Lord said unto him what is in thine hand and he said a rod and he said cast it on the ground and he cast it on the ground and he became a serpent and Moses fled from before it I would have too and the Lord said unto Moses, put forth thine hand and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand and caught it and it became a rod in his hand. You know what that moment right there tells me? Moses, you may have reason after reason after reason why you can't do what I am calling you to do. But God is in this place saying, Moses, I don't need who you think you are. I just need what you bring to the table. You give me what you have in your hand and I will use it. I can take that rod and that staff in your hand and do something miraculous and turn it into a snake and back to a rod again. I can use your speech impediment. I can use your failures in the past. I can use your questions for the future because all I need is not who you think you are or what culture says you are. I need what you bring to the table because what you bring to the table is enough because it's not you, Moses, that's doing the working. It is me working through you. And if you allow me to do that, your future is going to change into something that you could not even imagine. we got to choose to move beyond our past. But we got to let God have what we bring to the table because what we bring to the table is more than enough because what we bring to the table really isn't about us at all. It is about the one who is working in us and through us to use us, not only for your life, but for the people that aren't in this room today that are outside these walls that are running, maybe running through your mind who need hope and healing and salvation. God's choosing you to reach them in Canton. God's using this church to have influence in Cahokia. And I know I'm just a guy that's come in from Blue Springs, and I haven't been here for the 40 years, Bishop Kenny, or the, the three, or the, you've been here forever, but pastoral and three, I heard that earlier while you were trying to spy on the live stream. And um, I'm just a guy that's honored to be here and, and blessed, and so I haven't necessarily been hand in hand with all the sowing and the reaping that's been going on, but I know that there is increase, and I know that there is revival, and I know that there is purpose, because there is a group of people in Canton and Cahokia who are going to come to the table and say, God, whatever it is you want to do through us, we are here for it. We know that we may have some things, and because we, we, we all do. So, so, some things in our brains and our minds that would want to disqualify us and paralyze us in fear. But God's saying, I am calling you and I am choosing you and I am sending you regardless of your past and regardless of your right now. Because what you have right now in the present, what you bring to the table, the gifts I have given you, the, the talents I have given you, the blessings I have given you, what you bring to the table is more than enough for me to accomplish my plan in Canton and Cahokia. 
our excuses, our weaknesses, and our shortcomings are the very things God can work with. Are the very things God can work with. It isn't about us, it's about Him in us. And so again, I say, let God have the final say over your current situation. Choose to move beyond the past. Give Him your right now. And then understand and choose to be God's representative. Not only do we have to choose and reckon to move beyond our past. Not only do we have to choose and reckon to let God handle our situation right now. We have to, young people, we have to choose. Yes, God, I'm going to allow you to send me. I'm going to be your representative in Canton. I'm going to be your representative in our schools, in the places that we work, and with my family, and with our friends. I am going to say yes, because I, when I accept the calling, I I give you full control over my future. And the only type of future that we need is a future whose God's hand hand is always directing and leading and guiding and orchestrating. Accept the calling because God is the one doing the sending. Moses asks, what am I going to tell them? And God responds, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. We represent God. You can choose to say yes. You do not have to have this fear of missing out. We can today make the choice to say yes. I am going to choose God's future and God's anointing for me. Not based on my past. Not based on what what I have right now and what I bring to the table or what I don't think I bring to the table. I am choosing it because I want to move into the future that God has for me. Because here's the key. I mentioned it just a second ago. It's not about us. It's not about what the people in in Blue Springs and and my youth group or or my community or my coworkers see in me. It's not about who you see or who sees you in the halls of your high school. It's about who they see in you. And as God's representative in this community, you walk among these people and you are a light that shines forth in this generation. And they can see that they have come into contact with people who have come in contact with a greater power and a God who is calling and sending and changing lives. And as a result of you being God's representative, you have authority. Matthew 10 says, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go preach, saying the kingdom kingdom of heaven is at hand. You have authority to heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, and raise the dead. Acts 1.8 says you shall receive power. And not only do you get the authority and the power of God who works through you, you get the results as well. Mark 16, 17 through 18 says, and these signs shall follow them that believe. You're going to cast out devils. You're going to speak with new tongues. You're going to take up serpents. If you de- drink any deadly thing, it won't hurt you. You'll sh- lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. When you choose to move beyond the past, when you choose to give God what you bring to the table, you move into your future as his representative. And as a byproduct of that, you have his authority, you have his power, and you have his results. Not because it's me standing up here or it's you walking through those halls. It's because the power of God that works through you. But here's the thing. All of it sounds great. All of it sounds wonderful. Moses, God's calling you with this burning bush to do something that is going to be recorded in the history books. But it all hinges on that intersection of the calling and Moses deciding that I'm going to do this regardless of my past. Regardless of my character flaws right now. Because I trust that my future is at stake. Fear not. Fear not. I am standing in a room and before a group of people who have callings and purpose and destiny and anointing and a church who has impact in this city. But we can't stand on the sideline. I can't stand on the sideline. You don't have to fear when you walk out of here and go back to whatever situation it is you face. And maybe it's the greatest situation in the world, and I hope it is. But the days that it isn't, you don't have to fear because you don't walk out of this room alone. You walk out into your day-to-day life, and I am is with you. God identified himself as I am who I am. So no matter when or where, he is there. Highs or lows, good days, bad days. This God that we serve in the mountains or in the valleys, he is there. That's the very Everything that allows us to say on the great days and on the bad days, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, for you are with me. That same God is with you every single moment. 
Never fear. He's chosen you. He's called you. He's sending you. But don't fear. Don't fear your past. Don't fear your right now. Don't fear your future because he is in the middle of all of it and he can handle it for you. He handled it for Moses. He can handle it for you. Stand with me all across this room. I told you, I love history. And I found a quote from President uh, Theodore Roosevelt. And it just struck me in the moment. And this is what he says. It speaks to the, the principle that's being talked about today. This is what he wrote. It is not the critic who counts. It's not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who's actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes up short again and again because there's no effort without error and shortcoming. But who does actually strive to do the deeds? Who knows great enthusiasms? Who knows the great devotions? Who spends himself in a worthy cause? Who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement? And who at the worst, if he fails, at least he fails while daring greatly? So that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who never knew victory or defeat. What he was saying in that moment was, don't fear the results so much that you just get paralyzed to the point of inaction. Get in the arena. God is calling you today to not sit on the sidelines based on what you've done or what you think you've done or what you think you can bring to the table or can't. God is calling you today not to sit on the sidelines, but to roll up your sleeves and get in the harvest field and go to work for his kingdom because he has a plan and he has a purpose for you. Here's the thing. Moses could have bowed out out of fear for what he might lose. He was a few and on the run he could have sat it out on the sidelines and maybe no one would have blamed him for it because he had reason after reason for it but here's what happens when you choose to stay on the backside of the wilderness you're going to miss a miraculous deliverance of the children of Israel from Egypt and you're going to miss a Red Sea experience where all of a sudden out of the middle of nowhere God just decides to part the water and give you path through on dry land you're going to miss receiving God's handwritten law on tablets you're going to miss becoming one of the greatest intercessors the Bible has ever recorded and you're going to miss being in the faith hall of fame in Hebrews chapter 11. Moses, Moses, you can sit it out and maybe no one blames you, but you're going to miss the miraculous power of God in your life and you're going to miss the future that God has for you. And so if he could be in this place today, maybe he would sit there and say, yeah, maybe you do have reasons and maybe you have, maybe you don't speak right. Well, I didn't either. And maybe you've made some decisions along the way. Yeah, so did I. And maybe that you have reason, have the reason to say, you know what, I can't get involved in what's doing, what's going on here. And maybe, maybe you're at the point where you say, you know what, God, I've done too much. God doesn't even love me anymore. I'm here to say that that is the enemy trying to paralyze you with fear. And God is saying, no, 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 no. I know where you've been. I know what you're doing. I know what's happened along the way. And I have purpose. And I have promise. And I have salvation. And I have hope. And I have healing. Don't sit on the sideline because you're going to miss the most miraculous move of God in your life and in your family's life. Don't sit on the sideline for fear of what might happen when God's saying, you just come with me and let me take control of what you have and watch me work in your life. Watch me work in your city. Watch me work in your family. Watch me give you influence. Watch me give you spiritual authority. Watch me give you my power in Jesus' name. Watch me give you the results that can only come through me. If he's the God of yesterday, today, and forever, he's the God that can handle your yesterday, right now, and tomorrow. We talked about it the other night, and you, and you mentioned it, and we say this a lot back home. He's either God or he's not. He's going to come through or he's not. And you and I both know that there has never been a time where God has not come through where his will hasn't been accomplished. It may not be how we thought it was going to happen. It may have been in a different timeline. But here's the thing. God's will is the only way. God's will, God's way. How do we get there? From this burning bush experience to moving into my promise and my destiny and my calling. How do we get there? We choose it. We choose it. We say, yes, Lord, but regardless of my past. Yes, Lord, regardless of what I bring to the table right now. Yes, Lord, because I trust you to send me 
to be your representative and to completely change my future. I'm not sure. I, I've met some of you, most of you for the first time this weekend. Some of you I haven't even met yet. And I look forward to doing that here in just a few minutes. So I'm not sure where you're at on the journey right now. Maybe you're deciding if we really want to give this relationship with God thing a try. Maybe you're wondering if God could ever use someone like you. Maybe you're wondering if you could ever find that true forgiveness or salvation. Or maybe you're on the backside of the wilderness right now, just like Moses was. You're in good company. Because the great equalizer is the presence and the power of God that wants to move in and sweep in and just absolutely change the future of each and every person in this room. Regardless of right now, if, you're the, if you are, are, are the greatest Christian in the history of history, this point is still for you because God wants to take us further. And whether you feel you're so far away on the backside of this mountain that you could never catch up to where God has for you, to what God has for you, I'm here to say don't buy into the lie of the enemy to keep you paralyzed with fear because the great equalizer, no matter where we are on this spectrum or on this journey or on this walk, the great equalizer is the power and the spirit and the presence of God who wants to move into your life and absolutely take care of your past, your present, and your future. We've got to let that past die. You can have an encounter with a cross today, salvation today. You can have an encounter at this altar that can absolutely alter and change the outcome of your future. Take those steps today. Move beyond. Move beyond what you, what you see or what you think you see when you look in the mirror. Move beyond that blooper reel moment and comparing yourselves to everybody else's highlights. Don't do that. Don't get paralyzed in that. God's saying, no, I am right here, right now, calling you. God is enough. What you bring to the table is enough. You don't have to have it all figured out. God doesn't make mistakes. Your talents and your giftings are what God will use to accomplish His purpose in your life, in your family, and in this city. Just say yes, but you got to choose. Moses, you're at this intersection, this burning bush experience. You can stay here or you can move on. I know there's going to be some questions and I know there's going to maybe be some doubt and I know you don't know how it's going to play out. But choose it anyway. Because if you stay here on the backside of the mountain, you're going to miss the miraculous power of God moving in your life, changing your future. Join the fight today. Roll up your sleeves today. Come back to this altar today. It doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't matter what you see because what matters is how God sees you and what God sees are people in this room who are in one mind and one accord, who want His perfect will to be done in their lives, who is leading and guiding. And He's saying, yeah, I can use that. I can use that. Yeah, I can use that too. Not only can I use it, I want to because I love them so much and I have purpose that they can't even see. I have a future for them that will absolutely blow their mind. But he's standing right here today. I want to open these altars whatever, wherever you're at on the journey. If you want to pray in your pew, that's fine too. But there is a, a presence of God in this place who is calling and choosing and orchestrating your future and destiny and anointing that you maybe can't even see right now. Well, Moses couldn't either. Your past doesn't disqualify you. What you think are your giftings or lack thereof do not disqualify you. Your future is sure. Your future is going to happen because God is on the scene and He can use everything you bring to the table. But choose to get in the arena today. Make the choice right now together. God, we are a people who love you. We are a people who are here for you. We know that you have.